Hello, hello. Today I'm going to be doing a deep dive into the College of Lore Bard subclass. Let's do it. Starting off, we get bonus proficiencies. When you join the College of Lore at third level, you gain proficiency with three skills of your choice. Now this is interesting because bards already get half proficiency in all skills they don't have proficiency in. So we kind of already got half this feature just from the base bard class. However, once you consider that the half is rounded down, getting proficiency still is significant and it really does establish us as more focused on skills with this character than other bards. So we kind of have found our niche that we want to be even more of a skill monkey than bards already are. Also at third level we get cutting words. You learn how to use your wit to distract, confuse, and otherwise sap the confidence and competence of others. When a creature that you can see within 60 feet of you makes an attack roll, an ability check, or a damage roll, you can use your reaction to expend one of your uses of bardic inspiration. Rolling a bardic inspiration die and subtracting the number rolled from the creature's roll. You can choose to use this feature after the creature makes its roll, but before the DM determines whether the attack roll or ability check succeeds or fails, or before the creature deals its damage. The creature is immune if it can't hear you or if it's immune to being charmed. So this is kind of like shield, right? It's like the opposite shield. Instead of you getting a buff to their AC, they get a discount to their two hit or to their damage or to their skill check if they're going for a grapple check. Um, so it kind of feels like shield to me, except it only works for one instance. And it really is just expanding what our, our bardic inspirations were already doing and so we have to weigh it against what our bardic inspirations were already doing. Is dodging one attack or dodging a grapple as strong as protecting an ally's fight winning concentration spell? Well that's a case by case basis. If you're fighting something that attacks once and hits really hard, this can shine in that case. So it's, it's hard to evaluate because it needs to be weighed against so many factors but I do think it is a viable inclusion into to what our bardic inspiration can do. There's going to be times when this shines is the greatest thing we can do with our bardic inspiration, which can't be said for all use cases of bardic inspiration. So the short version of all of that is difficult to evaluate, but I'm gonna put it around, it's okay. Moving into sixth level, we get additional magic secrets, and this is where the College of Lore really shines. This is why people come to the College of Lore often. You learn two spells of your choice from any class. A spell you choose must be of a level you can cast as shown on the bard table or a cantrip. The chosen spells count as bard spells for you, but don't count against the number of bard spells you know. Okay, so third level spells and down, we get to choose any of them. That list is, of course, huge, but one I have to mention is counterspell. Picking up counterspell here is fantastic. Bards can be counterspell experts because our jack of all trades feature gives us half our proficiency, so we roll higher on this skill check when we're attempting to break spells bigger than the ones we're casting, so we are more likely to be able to counter higher level spells with our lower level spells, so we can be a little bit more flexible and where we can say, I am casting a third level spell to counter your ninth level spell, we can be a little bit more confident in that decision. And saying another one is just really hard, there's such an expansive list of spells at even this level, that it's just difficult to say which one is going to be best for you. So I'd play it case by case, DM by DM, and flavor by flavor. Finally, we move into the capstone, peerless skill. Starting at 14th level, when you make an ability check, you can expend one use of your bardic inspiration. Roll a bardic inspiration die and add the number rolled to your ability check. You can choose to do so after you roll the die for the ability check, but before the DM tells you whether or not you succeed or fail. So this is what's solidifying us as a skill monkey. We have more proficiencies and now we have the ability to take our poor rolls and make them into far better rolls. At a 14th level though, this is pretty late for this to be coming into the game. I would put this in the kind of okay to not that great range. It's not going to be super, super impactful, especially because we have a ton of spells. Our expertise is there. Our half proficiency is actually pretty good at this point. So the only time I feel like we're going to be definitively failing these checks is if we're rolling like a one and peerless skill isn't going to help us when we roll a one. It's, that's not going to be a big enough buff. Of course, there's some middle ground, but I'm just saying I don't think this is the most powerhouse of features. So that is the College of Lore, one of the shortest text wise subclasses of all of the bards. And how does it stand up? This might just be me, but I feel like the College of Lore's flavor is a little bit all over the place. It kind of has a scholarly feel, but it's not intelligence based. So it kind of makes me feel like it should be a storyteller, someone who tells stories that have been passed down through generations. And that's where I would take it. But when I read the flavor text, it doesn't really go there. It kind of talks about being for truth and justice and being not necessarily for the monarch unless they're for tr truth and justice, you know, which is just not where I went with it. So I don't 
don't know, the flavor is kind of all over the place for me. And I don't feel like the features really give us something to lean on as far as flavor goes. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments down below. Tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me how you see it. I would love to hear it. I, I like to be able to see these subclasses from a new angle to, to see if I can enjoy them more. But as it stands, I don't feel like its flavor hits the note for me. As far as mechanically speaking goes, I really feel like we're only here for the sixth level feature to get those extra spells to be that counter spell specialist. Otherwise, we're just being a bit better at skills, which is something bards already shown at. So we're shining just a little bit brighter than where bards are already shining. Cutting words will have clutch moments. Dodging the assassin sneak attack, for example, is going to be huge. That's massive. It's going to come up few and far between. More often than not, your bardic inspirations are going to be used for other things, but that clutch moment will probably come during your campaign and it will be exciting. We really don't change our playstyle much at all. Most of what we get comes out of combat, so in combat we're doing the same thing. Every now and again we're going to reaction, help our ally dodge and attack. Every now and again we're going to be casting two different spells that no other bard gets. And that's where this can get really flexible and interesting. That two spells is chemistry, man. Depending on what you mix and match, you can come up with, I bet, just a million different interesting variations. So it's like College of Lore altogether I am not super excited about. The additional magic secrets I am super excited about. If I'm taking a College of Lore build, it's because I have a cool idea of what I can do with additional magic secrets. As I said before, I am very interested in your take on the College of Lore. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are. Along with this deep dive, I've done several other deep dives revolving around the Bard. I am going through the Bard with a fine tooth comb, and I'm going to move over to other classes eventually as well. So if you like these deep dives, check out this playlist here. We are D&D Daily. We release new D&D content all the time. So if you love D&D, this is your spot. Hit that subscribe button, and I will see you on the next one.